If you have monetary units to spare, support Patreon and Canubis. I mean, support Canubis on Patreon. I mean, y you get the picture. By this coming Wednesday, Germany will have been a united country for 28 years, and my most popular video will open up for a year. However, the Korean Peninsula still remains divided in much the same way Germany was, minus the whole Berlin scenario. So could Korea reunify the same way Germany did? Well, as I really like to say with everything, in order to understand current issues, you really need to understand all the underlying history. So let's have a quick recap of the history of both areas. Germany was united under Brandenburg Prussia in 1871, and a new German Empire was established. However, over the next few decades, as Europe proceeded to douse itself with kerosene, people became shocked when one small spark actually set the whole thing on fire, and the whole continent went to war with itself, with Germany playing a big part on the losing side. After World War I, Germany's monarchy was disbanded, and the new Weimar Republic was forced to pay crippling war bonds. This gave rise to the Nazi regime, led by Adolf Hitler. During World War II, Germany started to expand all across Europe, killing millions and destroying whole countries in its wake. In 1945, Nazi Germany was defeated and occupied by the US, the UK, the USSR, and the France, who split up Germany, Austria, and Berlin into different sections until a more permanent solution could be found. Austria fully reunited, as did the non-Soviet parts of Germany and Berlin, which, keep in mind, was deep inside the Soviet sector of Germany. However, since the USSR kind of fell out with the other three countries, their sector eventually gained their independence as a socialist German democratic republic, whereas the West became the Federal Republic of Germany. After this happened in 1949, the two countries went their own ways. The West started to grow into a powerful country in its own right, but the East mostly stagnated, and so many Easterners tried to defect to the West that a big terrifying wall was built to stop them in their tracks, the infamous Berlin Wall, a wall that wrapped around West Berlin built by the East to keep the Easterners out of the West, like a defensive wall but halfway in reverse. It's confusing to look out of the context. So General, how are we going to take this castle? Take this castle? What, what do you mean? We built those walls. Okay, so are we taking the land back? No, we built a wall around their land. To keep the other side in? No, to keep us out. So we're protecting them from us? No, we're protecting ourselves from them and their propaganda. How does that- They're gonna invade us in reverse if we keep our guard down. The f*** that into you this time, Larry. There was also a border kind of like this going straight through all of Germany, of course. In both border areas, there were traps, fences, guard towers, and open stretches of sand so that soldiers would have no trouble spotting illegal border crossers. No one thought the reunification was remotely possible until Gunther Sobolski misspoke in a press statement in 1989 and accidentally said that the border was due to be open then. The wall fell and the German governments agreed to reunify, but also had to get their former occupiers on board. Not all of them liked the idea, but eventually this happened, and Germany is now essentially the beating heart of the EU and the third biggest manufacturer on the planet after China and the United States. So what about Korea? Well, the Korean Peninsula was united by the Shido Dynasty in the 7th century, and Korea maintained its independence until the 22nd of August 1910, when the Joseon Dynasty was annexed by the Japanese Empire. A couple more decades later though, some bombs were dropped on two strategic cities for manufacturing purposes, and Japan was forced to surrender World War II. Since the government of the Joseon Dynasty of Korea was effectively no more, the US and the USSR split the country at the 30th parallel as a temporary solution. But there's one thing you need to know if you want to study geopolitical history. There is nothing as permanent as a temporary solution. Unsurprisingly, both sectors established their own radically different governments. So who will control Korea? Me, they both said at the same time. Thus, when the Soviet-backed Kim Il-sung established a Democratic People's Republic of Korea in 1950, and attacked US-backed Syngman Minri's Republic of Korea, anticipating a quick victory, all hope of quick unification came crashing down. After the Korean War ended in 1953 with an armistice agreement, the peninsula was left virtually destroyed and millions of people had died. However, both sides quickly rebuilt. Initially, the North's redevelopment was faster than the South's, as the Southern government went through at least six different types. However, as the South started to become an industrial superpower akin to nearby Japan, the North was quickly left in the dust. When Kim Jong-il took the position of supreme leader from his father, he redirected most of the government's funds towards the military, mobilizing the country for war as the country became more and more isolated and vulnerable with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Right now, everything seems pretty much as stagnant as Germany in the 70s and 80s, though suddenly, early this year, what? However, to this day, the Koreas are divided by a strip of land called the Demilitarized Zone, or the DMZ, riddled with guns, landmines, and electric fences, which you can actually go to. Main attractions include lots of checkpoints, North Korea being right there, and the wildlife sanctuary that the lack of humans has provided for, though this is probably thanks to all the landmines. Side note, please don't bring your kids here. 
There are so many parallels you could draw here. None of the split countries had a geographic denominator in their formal name, and they simply had differing pre-titles. This happened almost immediately after World War II, and while this was happening, people probably didn't really think that unification was really possible. I could combine either side with its equivalent all I want, but that wouldn't really be getting the point across. I mean, I could say the same about Austria and Australia. Both are named after compass direction, both have only recently become independent countries, even though both have a lot of history, and neither of them really exist. German reunification saw a lot of hurdles, mainly in convincing the four former occupying countries to what had happened. Margaret Thatcher was even quoted saying, We've beaten the Germans twice, and now they're back. God, that's certainly a way to treat a trading partner, isn't it? Similarly, it's very likely that Korea would also have to overcome these hurdles. Basically though, it's not so much a game of who doesn't want a strong Korea, so much as who wants North Korea to still be a thing. The US doesn't, and Japan clearly doesn't, as you can see by the fact that Japan is one of the two countries that doesn't recognize the DPRK as a country, the other being the Republic of Korea. However, the real issue likely lies with North Korea's only real ally, China. China and the DPRK have led an increasingly uneasy alliance, especially since the DPRK effectively serves as a buffer between them and US-backed South Korea. However, relations aren't exactly akin to that of the US and Canada, and their friendship has been described more as an alliance of convenience. Seoul has been openly talking about reunification, but recent polls actually indicate that many South Koreans might not even want reunification, or, or, or at least might not view it as necessary. Incorporating the North in its weak economy would likely be seen as a burden on the South's much larger economy. This was much the same as with German reunification, as the West's much stronger economy had to deal with the East's much more stagnant economy. The reunification of Germany also wasn't exactly the two sides forming into one larger country, so much as it was really just the DDR surrendering its authority to the West, and the West moving its capital back to Berlin. Notice how it's always used the same flag, national anthem, political system, and all that? Oh, and how both modern Germany and former West Germany both called themselves the Federal Republic of Germany? This is what many speculate would happen under Korean reunification, as the Kim Dynasty would most likely have to lose its power and authority in order to reunite under a democratic southern-style government. However, the North actually does frequently call for reunification, but I have a feeling they're thinking of it going a bit differently. Okay, so we've gotten the issue of reunifying the country out of the way, or, well, not really, we kinda just smashed our way through a brick wall on this one, but, but I'm not here to make a documentary. But now we should also talk about what Germany has been like since reunification. In short, obviously many would say it's been great, but there have been some hurdles, most notably with bringing up the East's relatively weakened stagnant economy up to part of that of the West, and healing the damages of the Berlin Wall. With Korea, things might be even harder, especially since while Germany's been relishing in being one country, Korea has still remained divided, meaning nearly seven decades of near total isolation for those on the northern side. Between the two sides of Korea, not only could the societies not be any more different, but the average North Korean is a few centimeters shorter than the average South Korean due to the famines, and the language has even started to diverge. Overall, this issue has a hell of a lot to unpack. I mean, it was difficult enough to make this video, imagine how difficult this will be to actually pull off. However, one thing is clear, which is that Korean reunification should not be half-assed. And if you hear someone talking about temporary solutions, I would run because that's how we got into this whole mess to begin with. Thanks for watching this video, and please be sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to learn more every Sunday. If you want to enjoy more videos, go to patreon.com slash canubis to pledge a certain amount every month to keep the channel afloat. Also, big thanks to my friend Mikkel RP Wilson for becoming my first ever patron. See you on Sunday.